So last session, you guys successfully escaped from underground captivity. Uh, I would say successfully, like loosely. in all its in all its <laughs> loosely <laughs> merits, <but> very loosely. <laughs> loosely, there was a loss in the group. No, we weren't in the group. There was a loss. Nah, <laughs> this is loss. <laughs> <coughs> he Sorry. was going to hold us back, so I did us a favor. So it's not a loss, it was a gain. Mm -hmm. Are you recording this? Yeah. DM. I'll just have to edit it. DM Lord. Uh, we'll DM. All right. Prefer. Daddy DM. All right, take two. <laughs> Daddy DM. <laughs> recapping, <laughs> recapping the last session, you guys escaped from an underground facility uh, where you were being held captive with uh, two other people, two humans, two human males, one of which had an untimely demise because <laughs> of uh, a misunderstanding with the condition of ailments. <laughs> a misunderstanding. It was a misunderstanding, it was. Um, and then you deduced after quite some time of investigating the, the rooms uh, how to fixed together a capstan. That's what it, what it was actually called. Uh, the pedestal was, a called, was called a capstan. Um, had uh, indentions for bars that you push in a circle and once you guys figured that out you pushed the capstan in a circle and it rose up into the air like a giant screw and there was a shaft above it and you guys thought you were still trapped because there wasn't a doorway we were impatient and ornery <laughs> Doing, doing checks, uh, screwing yourselves up the, the shaft, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You had a very dramatic escape by one rotting out the door that was supposed to open, and then blowing it out with another firebolt, the second in the session. Um, you found yourself in the sun and rose up into what is presumably a, an arena of sorts. Sand on the ground and the sun is just hot. It's midday. Your eyes uh, become accustomed to what you see around yourselves and notice that you notice that there are people in this arena. All quiet. There's no, no whispers or anything. It's just they're watching. And then you hear a voice that says, Ah, you finally made it. Well done. And to backtrack to once you guys left this room, left this underground facility, I have some XP to hand out. Boy. You guys earned 50 experience for escaping captivity. You are level 3. I need to get the actual number. I'll, I'll update you. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up real quick. Yeah, you guys are level 3, so you already should have experience. You just add 50 more. Um, in addition to that, before you guys get too far into it, you earned, for solving a puzzle, 25 experience. So that's 75. And to our <laughs> to our gunman, he earned ten Spoiler. experience for killing a commoner. <laughs> so he earned eighty five experience while the rest of the party gained seventy five. So we have nine hundred experience to start with as level three, so it would be nine hundred and seventy five. What's the next level? Uh twenty seven hundred. Twenty seven hundred? So you guys got seventy five towards your next level. So 
So add that to your nine. What was it? Nine hundred. Yeah. Nine hundred seventy-five for most of the party. Glenn has nine hundred and eighty-five. So I'm gonna try to keep track of your kills. I'm gonna try to keep track of your assists and definitely encounters, quests, puzzles that you solve that you take part in as a group. You will all earn the same XP. So. What about killing sprees? <laughs> I'll, I'll consider a kill streak. <laughs> um, so that is my experience update for you guys. In an escape quest, not was to mention, completed. Since my inter other interaction, I have one. Exp yes, you you have an inspiration <clears throat> token that you can use at any time to spend it on one roll to give yourself advantage, or you can choose only you can choose to give that to someone else that needs it for a roll. Can't so. beg. <clears throat> You can't beg for other people's tokens. Because <clears throat> that was a home rule with a uh, house rule with a lot of our previous D&D's groups. Yeah, is that it, was, that it was a pooled. But I, I think it actually should be a currency. So that is what I'm going to do. So you guys are out in the sun. And you heard a voice. Oh, finally. Wait, what? What are you going to do? fuck are we? Wait, the fuck are we? And where uh, did the mouse go? He is not there I'm, on your shoulder. What the? Man? Guys are missing the mouse. <clears throat> I could have swore he was on my shoulder earlier. Anyone want to do anything right now? I want to look to the sky to see if my uh, bird's there. Okay, give me a perception check. All right. D20? D20. Yep. Eleven. Perception. Wisdom. Wisdom. Fourteen. <clears throat> Fourteen? Thirteen. No, yeah, thirteen. Uh, you don't see him right now. Okay. You do, however, see uh, that it is pretty cloudy on one side of the uh, arena that you're at mm -hmm. while you're looking up. Are you looking straight up? Are you looking at an angle? What are you doing? I'm looking around. You're looking around? Yeah. You're looking for your bird in the air specifically. Mm -hmm. um, you notice that the arena that you're in goes up several uh, sections of seat while you're looking up. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like it's a packed house. Um. Since I'm here, where did I hear the voice coming from? <clears throat> the party, um, having reached the surface, were all facing, let's see, it was counterclockwise the way you guys were turning it. So you guys should be at the bars in a counterclockwise. Aside from Killjoy, who was just kind of relaxing. Max he was holding a body to. too. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and get yeah. off the pedestal. Yeah, I'm gonna turn to where I heard the voice and see if I can see the person who's talking to you me. You get off you get off the platform <clears throat> yeah. and you the feel the crunch of sand underneath your feet. And you I want off my arm. feel the weight weight of your armor and your dragonborn gemstone dragonborn self uh, dig in, but you don't go too far in. Just just enough to feel that you don't have a lot of Good traction. Uh, your your question was wh where you heard it from. Yeah, where's where's your character? Right here. Right, right there. Yeah. Uh, you heard it from to your left side. So that you heard it from the left wall. Right over here. The the middle of the the wall oh, okay. there. That. I'm gonna look up and be like so. Who might you be? Might I ask? Okay, give me a perception check. Over. <clears throat> you said perception? Perception. Five. <laughs> I mean, I'm just asking the dude. I'm not trying to figure. You've got it. sweat in your eye, and you're just, and you got sweat in your eye, and you're, you're still kind of like dazed by the sun. Who if you were you underground, can I roll perception? are you one of the ones that had the <clears throat> dark vision? Yeah. Okay, so you you are trying to acclimate to to the sunlight. Go ahead. Oh, 
Okay. Anyone wants to roll a perception, see who's talking? I'll do it too. Because you were looking for your bird first. Anyone else want to roll? Uh, you want me to 14 total. I mean, if you want to roll too, go ahead. 14 total? Alright, where, where were you? On, 14 on the, as well. You guys look uh, where the voice came from. And you do have to squint a little bit. <laughs> I like how the body's just hanging yeah, off. Yeah, it just it fit perfectly. <clears throat> and notice after, again, you were in the moment, acc acclimating to the sun, uh, you notice a, a human man standing at a podium right there in the center. <laughs> Not the Alvar. Alvar. You notice a human man uh, just just past the wall on a platform underneath a covered uh, seating box, presumably for someone of higher status. Is there any is there anybody uh, next to him or higher status on this podium, or is it just him? Uh, give me another perception. Twenty. That twenty. I see everybody, and I see their breath. <laughs> I got a seven. <clears throat> I'm still, I'm still adjusting. All right. I probably don't have enough figures for this. They're in the box with him. Yeah, we just. Uh, you were looking at who else was in the box with him. What's yeah. in the box? What's uh, in the fucking box? That's that's what you were specifying, but you'll see around it too because you're natural. Mm -hmm. Do you have those uh, tokens? Tokens. Tokens. The yeah, I have the ones that I got from from hungry from Glenn. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I don't have enough humans because it's a bunch of humans that you see. No, of course. In the box with him. Or just in general. No, just uh, in this area. I, I, was, I was thinking, well, if we're going to do this area, we want to just draw a bunch of stick people. Yeah. He's got the. He's got. I got a bunch, bunch of tokens. Yeah, you. he's got tokens. Just uh, give him a second. Of course, actually. It's that bunch. thing in video games where they make a audience, but it's the same six people over and over. Unfortunately, yeah, and, uh, uh, and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, Roman Coliseums, uh, they will have like at least six important people in there. Six, and then some retainers. All right, I'm gonna need some help here. Ooh. Open some of those up, all of them up, actually. This is just for stand-ins until I get better sorted. You want me to put a few more important people uh, there? Okay. Yeah. I don't think we got enough. They're, they're Go down. All, these are all non-humans mainly. I'm just trying to use tokens for now. You have. Mm, yes, indubitably. I had to roll my tweets. Maybe better killing is going to happen. Hey, better, better to get a survey of the land. Fire. With your natural twenty. What? <laughs> Considering we're going to be killing a lot of people, should we mark them with the skulls, for, so we don't have a bunch of like laying down minis all over the Coliseum floor? That's what they're there for, but uh, continue. Oh, that's um, see, seated a. Let's start with him. All right. This man you see here on the podium. Probably should be in front of the mic. <laughs> you see in front of this, in front of the wall, uh, a man in a very, very bright purple robe. This is, this is a very elaborate, long robe, golden orna ornamentation along it. Its primary colors is like a... Uh, a, a Tyric Tyrian purple, the the, the royal purple. Um, it is a it is a 
That's more of a pink magenta. Mm. Um, this is like a royal purple, if you yeah. get it in your head. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, he is a, a tan-skinned human man who has a cap that a, a skull cap that matches uh, his robes. He has a staff in his hand, like a like a uh, like a like a scepter almost. And he also has uh, a little bit patch of black hair sticking out from under the cap, and a very thin lined beard along his jawline. That's who you see there. He could be a priest. Behind him, seated in three different chairs, three different thrones, here, here, and here, are three different official looking people. The one in the center is a man that a man that looks to be in his this this guy looks like he's in his 30s with with black hair, black beard, tan skin. This man here looks to be a lot older. Uh, probably in his 60s. A graying long beard. Uh, bald headed and he's wearing a set of white robes with a purple cross robe over it. <laughs> the man to the left of him, or on his right, is a man that looks to be in the military. He is sitting in a white uh, kind of regalia armor, like breastplate, that like, uh, I think it's called musculata. Like it, it looks like looks like it's muscles. I think is what what it is. Um, has little little flashy pauldrons, epaulets, whatever they're called, off of the sides. Uh, it's it's white with ornamentation of, of gold, and it has uh, he has on the bottom half of him uh, purple kind of kind of looking uh, ornament uh, ornamental skirt. Like he is a he's another tan man, uh, long, uh, not too long. It's like as long as my beard, to be honest. Long as my beard, but like kind of got like rolls to it. And he has a, a medium length hair, jutting down with a circlet. So that's him. The person right here is a woman that is. Wearing a purple dress, who has a sash along her front that is white and has various sigils that you can't really see from where you're at. You're too far away. And she has a uh, wreath around her head. She has long hair that's tied up in the back. And She's also holding a scepter. Other than those three, because you're still looking at the box, those are the seated people. Right here. These are kind of big. But. Right here, right here. Uh, right here. Right here. Set of stairs up here. Stairs over here. There is, you see, a back wall and an opening door way. Woman here. Woman here. They look like their servants. They look like their servants ready to. Serve back and call. Servants or uh, guard. Look. These, these two look like servant girls. All right. There's another guy here. These guys are very heavily armored. Heavily armored ornamental guards. They have 
long spear and large round shield. Okay. Their armor is just like the guys in the in the seat on the left side. So it looks like it's maybe his guard. It, it looks to be very similar. Uh, they have the musculata uh, armor on. It looks like it's more battle battle ready than his. Like his is more ornamental, but still very similar. And they have a they have helmets on that cover their face, but have a slit down the middle. Um, those are all the people that you see in the box and around the box with your natural twenty. Uh, with that being said, uh, you believe that you are being presented to a bunch of officials. Not to mention the stands around this building. Stands, the, the, with the other perception before, you are definitely being watched. Yes. The, the stands go up maybe three sections of, of uh, seating high in terms of like multiple sections of people sitting and then it's pretty tall but not but not uh, not Colosseum tall like Roman this place looks new there are pillars here here and here here holding up just this uh, it's like it's like this goes into it obviously at an angle and it has a covering going up over but there's the no other well, no they are out uh, in open air. The sun's bearing down. Are we playing Gorn? Uh, that's <laughs> what you see with your natural 20 and your thoughts on it. Oh, fucking hell. Okay. One second. So you have a bunch of heavily armed guards around a bunch of very official looking people. Around them, with with a crowd around them, you know. What do you want to do? Uh, I right. tell them all to go fuck themselves. Please don't. I I do. We just got captured by these people, possibly, or traded in for, like, in into slavery to be used in in <laughs> this. I'll tell them. So after he had them. seen all this, with with his detail. You guys will have met that conclusion eventually. Not a lot of time passes between him seeing this and like with his keen eyes. Wait, they're royal. Oh, uh, you guys could assume such with their garb. Can I? Uh, can I go? Uh, how much time do I need to? Uh, can I? Uh, uh, I want to. Can I assess? This guy's health, this guy's health, and this guy's health. I mean, if you're planning on fighting... It's, it's their weaknesses, if you remember. I know the question. Weak, weak spots. Okay, yeah. Do you want to do that real quick with your natural 20, since you had a natural 20? Yeah. Uh, yeah, give me, a, give me a keen eye roll. Okay. It's it's uh, it's the 2d6s, I believe. 2d6 gun or something. Okay. I was about to say... Four and one five. Four and one five. Well, being human, you you already know a vast majority of weak spots on them. Mm -hmm. They don't the uh, uh, the the royals, as you would think they are, um, don't have a lot of uh, armor on, other than the one that's sitting to their left or their right, I should say. Um, I'm, I'm more worried about the uh, but the these guys. Oh, okay, the front guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You. you <laughs> You don't see a lot of openings other than uh, their legs. Okay. Their legs and possibly their arms are their biggest weak spots. Can uh, tell the you? central, because he was looking at the, the, the man at the podium, the central man at the podium, he's not wearing any armor. He's just wearing robes. But they are pretty baggy. He could be wearing armor underneath. Mm -hmm. As a noble, is there any way I can do a charisma roll and maybe try and talk? Do you want to stand in front? Do you want to stand in front of us? Are you gonna Are you gonna move forward and yeah. attempt to interact with them? Yeah. Where you, Where you want to go? 
Just right in front of me. Right. Yeah. Just, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm like the second. That's where I'll be if battle happens, anyways. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of hide in the back using my small snatcher. And the, and the uh, NPC is probably gonna be all the way back. <clears throat> uh, oh, um, I, can I put the? Uh, I like to drop the guy on the podium. The dead guy on the podium. He's talking down. Do you throw him down? No, no. He, uh, I forgot to say that when I stepped up, I just laid him down. Okay, because you wanted to take... Yeah, you wanted to... That makes sense. You wanted to take a look around, and with him restricting your movements, yeah, you lay him down beside the thing. Did you want to do something? Do we recognize the royalty? Like, do we recognize any insignias, any, like... Out That'd be a history. Okay. Give me, give me a history check. Can I do the history check? Yes. We can multiple. But Anyone yeah, that wants to do history check, go ahead. Uh, right. History check. <laughs> What'd you get? Ooh, yeah. thank God I'm a halfling. <laughs> That's not better. <laughs> I got a three. He, what, what'd you roll the first time? I rolled a one. He rolled a one, and then he did his halfling luck and got a two. And that's three. What'd you get? Uh, I got two. Killed I got a one, but I have Ten. a five in history and a plus three on intelligence. So you rolled a one. You only use your your skill yeah. check plus four. your roll. You don't add on another so modifier. Four. So no. Apparently, okay. Apparently, you know, we ain't bad uh, shit. Nine, ten, I got eleven. Shamash, the Dragonborn Noble, does not recognize any of the nobility in the seating arrangement in front of him. I, I'm just going to say, I'm probably Kildry, it. you recollect something about uh, the lords that work around the, the main seas, the seaways. You, you recognize that the the outfits that they're wearing, a lot of it is purple. There's a lot of purple coloring and pigmentation to their robes and their outfits. Mm -hmm. That would coincide with the fact that you think that they're some of the sea lords, perhaps. Because with your history check, you... Uh, actually, give me a nature check as well. Okay. And uh, when do you want me to do that charisma? Be here in a second. Let me make sure we get through the, the thought process. Eighteen. Uh, what did you say? Nature. Nineteen twenty. A natural twenty. Okay. 20. Uh, you. Dirty twenty. Oh, on that process, your mind's going. You know, because you're looking at all these people and they're purple. You remember that there are uh, animals in the sea that uh, the humans harvest, mm -hmm. and they. I guess you could say wring them out or use their byproducts to create dyes. Okay. And this is uh, a very a very popular one for royalty of these, uh, these sea lords. Can I ask you? Uh, sorry to. Uh, what What did you say? What did he say when he first uh, came up? And uh, what has he said? He uh, hasn't said anything yet. I was getting to everyone's thoughts while they were. This is just, just like talking about recollecting. Yeah. What he said? Uh -huh. What he said initially was, ah, you finally made it. Well done. And then you guys were kind of looking around. Our dragonborn walks himself after leaving the platform through the sand, steadily getting his, his footing underneath this, uh, on, on top of the sand, and he walks up to the end of the platform and the rest of the party where he has visible uh, line of sight with the man. The man looks down to him and does a gesture like a nod or a bow and he says, welcome friends. Friends, that's how you treat somebody you kidnap from their home? Well, we don't really is that what you're saying out loud to him? No, that's me thinking. <laughs> um, he continues on. He says, welcome, friends. See that you guys have acknowledged his existence. He says, welcome, friends. Con congratulations on your escape. Though, it seems like it was not without loss as he looks to the body on the platform. Yeah, somebody apparently didn't know uh, what discovery was and kind of got a little confused. That is me saying that out loud. <clears throat> I'm not saying he did a bad thing. We just 
In the heat of the moment, things got a little tense. If we're not released right now, it won't be the only dead body in this area. Uh, you you walk to the front, uh, Smash, are you going to say anything? That's what he was... That's what I just said. What did you say? If they don't let us go, it's, that's not going to be the only dead body out there. Okay, thanks. Well, that is unfortunate business. Although, you did work together to release yourselves from this captivity, so you have that going for you. Uh, <laughs> despite the unexpected turn of events, <laughs> you did just kind of threaten. Hmm? You did just kind of threaten, threaten the people there. Um, Here we go. I believe, I believe an introduction or explanation. That would be great. Can I? I believe an introduction is needed. Can we ask him who he is? Wait, I think he's about to tell us. Oh. <laughs> Just give him a chance to talk. He patiently waits. Uh, he says, "Good day." He does another little gesture of bow. He has he has a scepter in his hand too. And he says, I am Safet Hano. And you stand in the heart of what I can proudly claim to be the most wonderful city in the world. Although I guess your expectations have not been as much since your captivity. We haven't seen much. That is very true, friend. I was about to say, he's got a point. I've seen a basement. You are in Kartadasht. And... This is the Jewel Port. Jewel Port City of the Known Seas. They just want me. What? <laughs> they trade gems. They uh, just want me. Oh. Uh, Having said my name, may I ask yours? Any gestures to the group? Go first. Shamash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to introduce myself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jansen. <clears throat> he nods to each one as you say your name. Kildred. That's two. Kildred. 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 Oh. I'm Glenn. And uh, that is the party, essentially. <laughs> Bam is not there. Bam has disappeared for some reason. And I'm still trying to figure that out. There appears to be less of you than I was told. He he notices again uh, the dead man, and then Aros walks out from behind you. Where's he going to? He he hadn't known. He hadn't, he hadn't seen Aros because he was behind the dragon portal in his armor. Aros Let's walks say, out. If behind me, then he would definitely would have seen him. Aros walks out from behind the dragon horn and says his name. I am Aros. Why are we here? And... He just kind of smiles. That smile. Do you guys want to do anything? Uh, I'm going to check on the body and make sure nothing bad has happened to it and then just kind of patiently wait for somebody else to follow. You want to check the body? Yeah. See if I see my ghostly um, friend. You look to the body. Uh, you don't see the ghost there. Is his eyes open? The body's eyes? Yeah. Nobody closed it. The eyes are still open. I'm going to close them. Just out of respect. Now that we have a chance moment to ourselves. <clears throat> uh. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm just going to patiently wait. You, 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 closed, you closed his eyes and... Say a quick prayer under my breath and... Basically, may the shadow keep you safe. The man at the podium. Can I pull my weapon from 
around from my back and pull it out to my hands. I was about to say, we should probably all get ready. <laughs> I'd, I'd put my hand on my, uh, on my sword sword, but I did not draw it. The man at the podium, having seen the, the halfling close the eyes of the, the body, um, speaks up, kind of like he wasn't expecting there to be a dead guy. He, he, he speaks up saying, if you wish, we can take the body and uh, properly, properly I made, bury him. I made a promise to his, I guess, spirit that I would get him home. He said he's from an island that I know not where he comes from. That would make sense where we acquired him. I don't know what your intentions are, but if you plan on taking the body, I would would ask that you would at least try to get him back to where he came from. It was his last wish, at, at least. Here in Kartadash, we do honor the last wishes of the uh, dying. However, uh, we have other business. Oh wait, I uh, in his voice, I uh, I said, I asked in a, uh, in his voice, I say, acquire him. As in a question. How? Yeah, how did you acquire us? He looks to you and he answers. One of our ships came across your members of your party. My members, eh? I'll shut up now. One of our ships came across your party in one of our... one of our peacekeeping missions, I shall say. <clears throat> and it is not uncommon for men of the islands to be found captives of I'll say the peoples that tend to raid them we dealt a heavy blow to a fleet of raiders and brought the survivors to our humble city you are all survivors I'm gonna go for a charisma, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go ahead and I guess go for a persuasion roll to try and talk him to let us out, and that none of us had anything to do with any raiders, per se, because we were all just like, chilling, right? You were you were in your own lands or wherever you were, um, conducting your own business as your characters would see fit, and. To your recollection, you were the one that remembered the most. You heard magical energies, and then, along with the rest of the party, felt drowsy and clocked out. Right. You woke in the captivity of the underground facility underneath this arena. You want to do a charisma check? Uh, go ahead and roll a persuasion uh, with what you said, worded out how you will. What do you say? Well, I guess since it's already failed, I'm just going to say, let us go. Well, it's however you want to word it. Let it's just my how much people weight. go. All right. Um, I try to explain to him that uh, we were all just minding our own business and we had no part with bandits or raiders or anything of that nature. And that I, myself, am a noble. Go ahead and let them know. So they mess with okay. me. They're starting a war. You are noble. Indeed. From what lands are you a noble? Dragon hole. Hmm. He'll, he 
looks over his shoulder and does this, and uh, one of the three people that are seated, uh, the old man in the center moves up behind him, like, hurriedly, which doesn't make sense because he seemed like he was a throned individual. Uh, and they, they whisper amongst themselves, and there's a, a little bit of a nod as he beckons him away. So you're one of the dragon beings from across the continent. I suppose. Mm. I can let you go. But I cannot say the same for the rest. <sighs> and I thought Shadowfell was bad. But I am a servant of the young master. Mm. Give me a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It was a, it was a two. <laughs> it was a two. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Plus zero. I'm not very You're a little more kitted than a servant should be. The man, uh, the man continues on uh, to say, I can let you go because we have actually been wanting to acquire access to the other side of the continent. We can't get past the raiders. And it would be nice to have a I guess a friendly face, an ambassador of sorts, an emissary to I mean, these unknown lands to us. I mean, if you've got a raider problem, we could probably help you with that. Yeah, I'll go as an ambassador, possibly, but I, I've got to take everybody. What? The more people that are on. This was a seven from my perspective. What raiders? <clears throat> The, no, I mean, uh, I mean, what kind of race? The waters around us. There are many island chains, and these chains are home to a very volatile people. These people continually attack the more civilized, civilized lands. They hit our ships in trade, they raid our coastal fishing villages, and they've even attacked military vessels from time, from time to time. So my persuasion to try to say, hey, if you're having raider problems, we could help, was a nine. That was kind of my hope. Huh. That is... Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna... I'm gonna ask... Uh, to whom do these raiders slash savages who do they serve? No no check um, no knowledge of ours uh, can tell us who they serve they don't leave a lot of survivors when they attack our trade, trade routes and outskirt villages. They appear to be just humans. But these these humans are monstrous almost. They lack any morality. And they destroy anything they can get their hands on when they're out at sea. That brings us to why you were in captivity. You are the only known survivors in the last attack that we thankfully quelled. The, mer the merchant ships haven't been running in quite some time. At least in the area you have seemingly come from. And 
we found the best way to fight these enemies are to have those they targeted. Because they had some quality that they wanted. And they might want again. So why would they want someone who's con well no actually never mind I know why they would want someone who's connected to Shadowfell do you say that? <clears throat> I, yeah I start to say why do they want someone from Shadowfell but then I trail off I think I know why because it'd probably be easy to get into Shadowfell to con possibly conquer that land as well you all appear to have you raising your hand? no I'm, I'm stretching you all appear to have unique qualities that much we can see. We can all see it. And we want to know why they want you. What purpose do they want you? Uh, can we, um, can we, we do a uh, history? Yeah. Any of you guys want to do history checks or... Ooh. 16, 17, 18. Dirty 20. What are you trying to... Um, recollect specifically. Um, why they would want us? Uh, yeah. Why would the raiders want to attack our ship? To uh, or exactly what I know about these raiders of this land? I got a. You want to know point. about the raiders? You want to know about why they would pick you? Like yeah, well, like what purpose a group like this would want with you? Yeah, and how they easily bested us. Yeah. Are you rolling too? Any of you guys? I, I did. Or what was your question? That you're are you are you doing a history check for knowledge? Yeah. Yeah, just just let me know whatever I you just roll to check to see if there'd be any reason. They Smash, were you rolling too? No, I don't need to know anything. I, mean, I can. But so let's start with Kildry. Uh, Kildry, you uh, you have not seen. Uh, groups of people like he's he's uh, describing. However, you know that your own people, uh, the people of the um, <laughs> the people of your organization, uh, might be well regarded in some circles of, uh, I'd say. My my group wouldn't be connected to this group, would it? There's probably not a chance um, because they're more organized and don't deal with barbarians. The raiders are not, yeah. Okay. Uh, but there are some dark gods at work for sure with <clears throat> barbarians and usually raiders have, have connections with darker gods. And your organization has a little bit of a history with some. Um... Since I was a military man before my incident, would I have known of some... I rolled a unnatural 20. Would I have run across... You, you rolled a natural 20 for your un, history? Unnatural. Unnatural? Okay. Yeah. But Did in my time as a soldier, as a fighter, would I have come across... The, basically, I'm asking if that was the group that killed me. <clears throat> that is... If I had run across somebody like that or... You have not run across them either. Okay. You have uh, more or less. So it wasn't the the people that killed me. You were more or less an inland person okay. compared to a sea seafaring. Um, gotcha. Character. The you were doing a, a check on on um, the people though. Um, yeah. You you don't have much knowledge other than there are raiders that sprout out here and there along the coastlines and gotcha. island chains. You just I wouldn't have heard about anything them. about it either in my time. Yep. Okay. Well, what are we waiting for? So what's your offer? My offer, that is a great term, my offer is that you take up arms against the sea peoples. The sea peoples that kill ours, stop our trade, stop our fishing. We want access to all of the sea. We don't want to be limited. What do we get in return? Well, I imagine 
Aside from my freedom. Any... Yeah, Any... Well, being a noble, you get possibly a trade connection with us. Beyond that, any loot you can acquire from these raiders, they may have hit some important people. You will also be stopping them from grabbing anyone else. Killing. Enslaving, maybe. Why should we care? <laughs> Do you just botch? Yeah. You just kind of like, you're, you're kind of getting a little bit like worked up and you're just like, oh! <laughs> So I don't say anything, just <laughs> you just kind of choke him. <laughs> yeah, can't, I can't, uh, just well, I know I'm in, I can't speak for the rest of the party, though. I mean, I've never been a big fan of raiders in general, so I, I, I'm in, I, I don't see any other choice. We weren't sure. If you had any connection with these raiders, hence the lockup. Uh, okay. I'm gonna uh, do an in, I want to do an insight check on this dude. Okay. See if he's telling the truth. See if he. See if I know that what he's saying is not a bunch of. What'd you get? Ooh, seven. I got a yeah. ten. Yeah. Right, Anytime right. when you're talking to somebody in a social encounter, you can roll an insight. Or um, when you're using your words, you can use a deception or persuasion. Anytime. What am I, what am I doing? Uh, insight. If, insight. If you want to do an insight on them. 10 11. Okay, I'll be 11. I got 10. 16. 16. You yeah. believe he's telling the truth. Uh. Although, you still don't know too much about him. Other than his name and... Obviously, he's a man of riches. You do think... You do think it might be worth your while, given, again, his garb and the situation he appears to be in. Well, they could... They, these people could be... Yeah. First off, what are we up against and what we have backing us? You like have... Forces-wise. You are against... A force of humans that appears at times out of nowhere on the seas but it seems to originate in certain areas around islands how, how big are these fleets? Is it just like single ship attack? these are smaller ships smaller ships powered by rower and they sneak upon larger vessels and trade ships. Continuing your question. Um, backing us is the power of our military fleet. However, being the government that it is, we can't fully support with all of our forces. I have to run through another man and kind of points to this other man sitting in the seat on the right side, or I should say the left, as we are a dual system. Not the Pope, not the, Pope. the military leader. No, yep. right. this guy. Oh, that, that, that guy was in the way, sorry. We run a government of checks on each other. A dual, a dual suffix. And not everything can be instantaneous. We often veto each other. This, however, is a pressing issue, so I believe we'll get as much support as we can, but without taking too many forces away from our own interests. You have the Navy, our most, our most powerful force. Uh, you have the Citizen Army, but I believe you'll get the most use 
out of our mercenary forces. We have a vast mercenary force that we call to for ground force. What is the term? And then the other guy from behind him says, invasion. Um, if we can take out if we can take out the strongholds of these sea peoples the seas will be a lot safer for us be a lot safer for trade and just overall be the best option for everyone uh, prison dissertation mm. a magic user I press the dissertation uh, uh, words in front of me that the uh, person could see. It says, I'm a demon hunter. Uh, why should I be involved? There's no telling why these people desired you. But I'm sure it has something to do with demons. If they, perhaps they needed help. Perhaps there's something ailing them that causes them to go into this way of theirs. Or maybe they're being led by demons. Who knows? I, I think before we do any kind of military action, we definitely need to get some intel and some recall on this beforehand. We need to know where they're set up, how many we're looking at, and why they're doing this, if we can't find out. It's perhaps best to do this in smaller, smaller groupings. Yeah. Your best bet be that it is, your best bet is to join the ranks of the mercenaries. They have more free range than our navies. Our navies are tied down. They have their own ships. They have their own needs, too. So it may not be all for free. All right. I praise the dissertation. I, this, and here, here's what the, that means. Who are you doing this to? Him? No, he, he knows what it means, but I didn't, uh... That's, that's just a, if I am my, uh, I am my, uh, I am my associates in my organization, uh, is around, they can, uh, uh, they can do what I ask. Mm. All right. Um, just, uh, just, you can, uh, you can make it immediate. Or... You made it a big symbol above you? Yeah. Okay. To further test your skills, we put yeah, you in the yeah. underground to see whether you were of the same alignment, to see if you could escape See if you could escape captivity. If you weren't some thralls of some sort. Uh, all tests? Many tests. That was your first. And you appear to have succeeded. Uh. <laughs> This isn't some training camp. I don't need to be tested on my skill. The leadership of the mercenaries says otherwise. Okay. Bring him down here then. <laughs> 